My name is Bev McCullough from Flamingo Toes and I'm very excited to be here with you today as we wrap up our Meadowland so along. You guys, where did the last eight weeks go? <laughs> I have no idea. I feel like we just started this so along, but it's been so much fun. I hope that you guys have enjoyed it as much as I have. It's been a blast. I've loved seeing your quilts. Um, and I definitely want to keep seeing them even if you finish yours up in two months or six months or whatever the case is, please share photos because um, one, there's no penalty for finishing late, thank goodness. <laughs> and two, we all want to cheer you on and, and it's always so fun to show off your work. Even if it's not perfect, we know you know we don't do perfect around here. We just um, have fun and enjoy what we're making. So. Today is the last day in the Meadowland Sew Along. We are sewing on the borders on our fun quilt, and I know several of you have already finished. The borders are a very simple step. There's only print borders, there's no sashing border, but I'm gonna share a couple tips on ways that you could make the quilt bigger, and then um, just a couple reminders about doing borders. But then I'm also gonna show you guys a fun, um, another version of the quilt by a friend of mine. And then I'm going to show you all the new colors coming in Dainty Daisy. And I cannot wait for you guys to see these. It's going to be a super exciting, fun show today. So I hope you're doing well. And you guys, we have air conditioning and we have power. <laughs> it's been a crazy, uh, perfect storm of weirdness during this so long. One time we lost power and... That was last week, we had no power, so I had to do a very short video because I only had a limited battery left on everything. And then the week before that, we had no air conditioning. But today, we have power, we have air conditioning. It is all, well, I shouldn't say it's all going to go really well because I'm not gonna jinx myself like that. So we're, we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna say things are great and we're happy about it. And I'm glad because it's going to be crazy hot here this week, you guys. I think it's going to be hot everywhere. It feels like summer finally decided to be real angry about um, whatever. And I think we're we're in the mid to later 90s degrees, which is pretty warm for us. Usually summer's around mid 80s. Um, and so that's not a bad thing. Um, well, the 80 part, not the 90 part. So I'm going to be sewing inside a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be great. So let's see who's here. Cindy's here. She got her kit a couple days ago. She's excited for, and this is her first sew along. Cindy, yay! I'm so glad. That's awesome. Well, Cindy, if you need extra help or need anything during, um, if the videos, you know, that you can go back and watch the videos later or anything, just send me an email. I'm always happy to help. Uh, Laura's here. <laughs> Let's see, I'm missing some over on YouTube. We have Dolores and Teresa, Elaine's, uh, oh, Elaine's in Hawaii. Hello, Elaine, why have you not brought us with you? Well, I guess you kind of did, right? <laughs> Thanks for tuning in from Hawaii. That's so exciting. <laughs> and she finished her quilt last week, yay. Oh, that's exciting. Pamela's here, Colleen, Jan, or Jane, sorry. <laughs> Deneen's here, hey, Deneen. Is it hot in O'Fallon, Illinois, Deneen? It's very hot here. Uh, oh, Jane says, even in Minnesota, we have 90s this week. Okay, so it's going to be hot. Hey, Judy. Um, and Pamela says, it's hot in Indiana. Ready for autumn's cool, crisp weather. I'm telling you, it's like all the stores decided this week that all the fall stuff is going to come out, and now I'm kind of really over the heat. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I can buy acorn plates from Anthropology then I shouldn't have to deal with 90 degree weather. This is how my brain works. <laughs> Colleen says she's really enjoyed um, the sew along. Husband did a little picking, but everything turned out. Does your husband do your unpicking, Colleen? How sweet is that? I love it. I need my husband. Well, okay, let's see. I had quite the, the event this week. Kitty is not allowed. Oh, so Adelaide is my new kitty. You guys met her a couple weeks ago. She's not allowed in the sewing room anymore when there is a quilt on the long arm. And um, 
So I'm having to keep the door closed because she tried to climb the batting in um, for the quilt that's on the long arm. And as you know, batting is not the most sturdy of ladders. So now there is a two foot hole in the batting that's on the, that hasn't been loaded onto the quilt yet. Like it's part of the, anyway. <laughs> I'm going to have to unpick the whole first row that I did of the quilting and cut off the batting and move it up. Um, I don't think I can fix a two foot hole. It feels, it feels too, I don't know. It feels like too much. So anyway, if, uh, if, if you want to send your husband my way and have him do some unpicking for me of, a, of long arm quilting, I would appreciate it highly. <laughs> Linda says she's going to make up the um, center of the quilt for a wall hanging. I love that idea, Linda. Please share a photo. Uh, let's see, Sue says she finished hers early because she had her knee replaced. Oh goodness, Sue, I hope that that, I hope you're recovering well. Um, my mom had that done. Um, she's had both knees done, and I just really highly encourage you, please, even though it's not fun to do your physical therapy, which is me being completely nosy in your life, um, I hope you recover well. My goodness. Uh, let's see. Teresa said she's sad for it to come to close, but excited for the next one. Yay! I'm so glad. Oh, and everybody's saying yay. Uh, for the power good Janice she loves dainty daisy purchased a bolt of peony did you Janice that's so great oh yay you guys are the best <laughs> oh let's see we have creative cats from Memphis hey Robin that's awesome okay you guys are you excited okay let's see let's let's do things a little bit different here so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna do tips and ideas for making your quilt larger if you would like um, and then we're going, I'm going to um, do the giveaways and then we're going to look at the Dainty Daisy colors. So completely changing the format today, but I'm like, I liked last week doing our tips early and then we did the like light stuff after. So we're going to try it this way and see how it works. <laughs> um, so my tips on borders, these are very simple borders in that there's no background sashing that you have to do a border with before you can sew on your print borders. So my big tip is there are a lot of seams in this quilt. Um, so don't necessarily assume that your quilt is exactly the size of my quilt. Um, check your measurements before you cut your borders. You want to always do that anyway. It's a good habit to get into to always piece your, check your, measure your quilts before you cut your border uh, sizes. And the other thing is, is don't measure the edge of your quilt. So fold your quilt in half and measure along the inside for the width and length and that's going to give you a much more accurate measurement than if you're measuring an edge because when you're measuring an edge it's very very easy to stretch your seams a little bit and that measurement won't be accurate so it'll be a little bit too long and if you cut your borders that way that that's what kind of gives us that odd pointy sort of look sometimes with a quilt we've all done it um, but where your, your borders kind of point out. And we don't want that. We want our quilts to be nice and square. And so just measure the insides, um, like length and width, and that will give you a much more accurate measurement. So just a good um, best practice to have when you're cutting your measurements, when you're cutting all your measurements, but when you're cutting your borders particularly. So I had some ideas today for extending. So this quilt ends up approximately 73 by 73 so that isn't really big enough for a bed I think a queen size is usually in the neighborhood of like 85 to 90 ish and then of course a king is even bigger but you could um, definitely add in some sashing if you wanted to extend so you would sew up the middle all the same and then instead of sewing your print borders on you could sew a good size background border which would look like sashing you could even figure out the math, and I'm sorry that I don't have the math for you, but you could make a patchwork border. If you have fabric left over from your kit, which I assume that you do, um, you could do some patchwork borders and then another sashing border and a print border. It just depends on how big you want your quilt. You can also do multiple print borders. If you want to add you know, a smaller contrast border on the inside, then do like a nice large, especially if it's on a bed, I love a large border on a bed quilt. Like a, this is, what is, what are these? I don't even remember. 
Let's look. Let's look. They are, well, I don't know, four and a half inches. You would cut them four and a half inches, but you could easily do a nice big deep border and do like an eight inch border on the outside, which would give you um, a, a nice big quilt. And if you wanna go crazy, you could even scallop it because how cute does a scallop border look on a bed? So anyway, some ideas for making the quilt your own. You definitely can um, get creative with that. Uh, you know, if you have the kit, you would need to purchase additional fabric, of course, but just things to think about um, as far as ways to enlarge it. It's a little bit harder with a square quilt than it is with just a single block quilt where it's easy to be like, okay, well, I'm just going to add more of these same blocks. Um, but you can get creative with how you're extending it. So some ideas for you there. <laughs> oh, Jane says she has some long arm unpicking to do too. I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> okay, so those are my tips for borders for finishing up our quilts. Definitely share your uh, progress as you guys go and um, feel free to share your own takes on the pattern. I've loved seeing it in other people's fabrics as well as in Sweet Acres. And along those lines, I want to show you this fun quilt. So this quilt was sent to me by Amy Adams and she is one of my quilt pattern testers. So she made up this quilt several months ago, but she sent it to me to take to the retreat that I'm teaching at Stitch in Heaven in a couple weeks. I'm teaching this Meadowland quilt um, and if you are not done with the quilt or if you didn't make it and you're just following along You can still I believe there's still a couple spots left open if you want to come join me in Texas in a couple weeks I do have my teaching and events linked in the video description so you can check that out at any time um, But she sent it to me so I could show what the quilt looks like in different fabrics so Amy made up the quilt in Tasha Noel's Quilt Fair, and it's stunning, you guys. That collection is so bright and fun. And she hand quilted it with a really big, um, like, sashiko stitch. So let me open this up here and show you guys what it looks like. Isn't this stunning? It is the prettiest colorway with these reds and blues. And then hopefully you guys can see all these little dashed lines. That's her hand quilting. And it feels like she used embroidery floss for like a pearl cotton. So isn't it beautiful? I think it's so pretty and I love how it turned out and I just wanted to show it to you guys. So maybe you made it up with um, Sweet Acres but you want to get creative and make another version. Um, there's a little bit more inspiration for you. <laughs> so anyway, thanks Amy for sending that and um, definitely share your progress. It's really fun to see. So, oh, I'm glad you guys like it. Laura asks, what happens if you cut your borders longer than needed and then trim them to size after you've sewn them on? Someone suggested that to me, but she hasn't tried it. Um, that can work. I have done that in the past, Laura, but it does, sometimes you do risk having kind of those pointy corners because you're, you're um, not necessarily measuring from the center so you're just sewing it onto the side you're going to have to be very careful if you sew it onto the side not to pull any of those seams kind of open or extend them or anything like that so it it can be a little bit of a risky proposition to do it that way i have done it that way and it does work in a pinch it's a little bit it's not too bad on a quilt like this where the only seams that you have touching the print border are like the ones around the pinwheel and then we have a long strip of sashing around the um, star block so it's a little safer with a quilt like this it's much harder if you've got a quilt that you're doing you know tons of seams on because it's it's a little bit harder to get a really accurate measurement that way so um just something to think about laura <laughs> Pam says it's a lovely quilt. She has the quilt fair fabric too. It's really fun. And Pamela likes to see different fabrics on the pattern. Me too, Pamela. Okay, so let's talk about giveaways. Um, last week, so every week I do a giveaway for you guys and it's my way of saying thank you guys for tuning in and how much I really appreciate um, the time that you guys have and what a great community we have. I just love hanging out with you guys. So we have a little giveaway every week, and um, this week, last week's giveaway 
was this fun bundle here. So this is my Make It Mini book and it is filled with 13 mini quilts all with a little touch of embroidery. So there's lots of fun designs in here and um, ways to personalize them and all kinds of things. You can find this book in my shop if you would like to check it out. We are gonna do a sew along this fall with it. I don't have the exact dates. Let me find the project. But we are going to sew up this Home Sweet Home. And it's gonna be a fun one because you can really customize it for your house and your style but you can also do holidays. It does not have to be a spring or summer or something you can leave up year round. You can do a Christmas version if you'd like. Um, it's gonna be really fun. So as soon as I have the dates for that, I'll let you guys know, um, but this will be a fun one that we'll do this fall. And mini quilts are nice, um, just um, light projects. They're not a full quilt. And especially as we go into the holidays and fall, that's when we're really focused on holiday projects and gift ideas. So. This could easily count as a gift idea for you if you want. Not all of us have time to make a huge uh, full-size quilt in the holidays, so that's why we're gonna do that. So with that, I have for you guys two uh, five-inch stackers of Liberty. This is their Flower Show Coastal Walk. It's, I mean, we all love Liberty fabrics, right? But look at these prints. Isn't this colorway beautiful with the yellows and blues? I think it's so pretty. So I have two five inch stackers for you there. I have a Cute Cuts Lori Holt ruler. This is a very darling little ruler and it is two and a half by four and a half. So perfect for trimming up um, flying geese or like stitch and flip blocks, anything small like that. This is really handy. And Lori's um, rulers come with kind of a rough uh, side on the reverse side so they don't slip around a whole lot, which is nice. And in the Liberty theme, I have the cutest little pincushion for you. This is the uh, Liberty, I don't know what pattern it is. It's the apple pincushion. <laughs> so look at how cute that print is. And it comes with a little felt leaf on top and a stem and it's beautiful. So this would be a great gift too. So this is the bundle from last week. And our winner is Laura Harris, 932. Two, two. <laughs> Laura was watching over on YouTube last week. So Laura, if you um, see this, when you see this, send me an email, bev at flamingotoes.com, and I will get your prize right out to you. The giveaways are very easy to enter. All you have to do is leave a comment, and it counts as your entry in the giveaway. And you can do that on Facebook or YouTube, and you can do it live or later in the week, whatever works for you. And the following Monday before the next video, I put all the names in a proverbial hat and draw the winner and then we um, then I announce the winner. So it's really easy. So this week, because we are on our last week of our, let's see, we are on our last week of our sew along, I wanted to do something a little bit different. So we kind of have a biggish giveaway, you guys. I'm excited about it and I hope you will be too. So the quilt, backing to finish up this quilt you need either four and three quarters yards of regular width fabric or you need two and a half yards of 108 inch wide fabric sorry one sec and um so you can use either whichever one you want and i have a wide back out in three different colorways with this sweet acres collection so even if you aren't using it and your fabrics would complement, even if you're not using Sweet Acres for the front, your fabrics might complement the wide um, back for Sweet Acres because it's a really fun print. It has the big magnolia florals and it also has barns on it and the barns are different colors. So I have them linked in today's video description to Fat Quarter Shop, but there's lots of shops selling them. So check with your favorite shop and see if they've got the wide backs in. The nice thing about a wide back is if you haven't ever used it, it's 108 inches wide. So you need less yardage because you've got 108 inches of width. So this quilt's only 73 by 73. So that's why you only need a little bit more than two yards. And having a little bit extra is perfect if you're gonna put it on a long arm because you need you know some extra around on all sides. So 
it's fun and you don't have to piece the back together, which is just delicious. Um, <laughs> I really don't love piecing backs together. I mean, I will happily do it, but if, it's a, if I have a wide back and it works, then I will go for that for sure. So, oh, Linda's here and she's finally working on hers. Yay, that's awesome. Uh, Cynthia says she's, uh, it's a fun quilt sandwich and binding left to do. Yay, that's awesome. So for today's giveaway, I have three giveaways in one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give away three different cuts of my wide back. Here's what the wide back looks like. You can see the big florals on the, the sand dollar colorway. The barns are all different colors. So there's um, kind of a red, a green, a yellow, and a blue barn. And they're all directional, different directions. So it doesn't matter which way you load it for your quilt. So I'm going to give away three different cuts, enough to do this quilt, plus you could do like a mini quilt or something. I'm giving, these are three yard cuts. So I have a pink colorway, a sand dollar colorway, and then I have this fun green colorway. And these, the green one has green barns and then the florals. And the pink one has pink background, color me shocked, right? And it has little pretty red barns. These really look like our, um, the Sweet Acres barn needle minder that I designed. So they would look great with any of these would look great with the quilt, especially if you're sewing with the kit. You can see even the pink one, let me show you here. Even the pink one looks beautiful with the quilt because um, it really highlights the pink flowers and things like that in the quilt. So I'm going to draw three different winners and I am going to um, pick randomly which one you get, the pink or the white or the green. Hopefully the one you get, you're not averse to one particular color over another. Um, but I have these um, three, ac three acres, <laughs> three yard cuts for you guys. Um, and so we'll have three winners next week and um, that will enable three people to finish up their quilts in a really fun way. So I hope you guys are excited about that. I haven't ever uh, done a giveaway with the wide backs before, so this is the first time I've ever done that. Um, if you um, are concerned that you won't win or if you don't want to wait, you can, like I said, find the wide backs at Fat Cord Shop. I have that linked in today's video description and you can check that out there. So don't forget to leave a comment on today's video and don't forget to come back next week and check and see if you were the winner. Um, it is your job <laughs> to, if you comment on a video, to come back the following week and see if you're the winner and because um, it's very hard for me to contact people after. So see if you won and then you'll be able to send me the email. So I hope you guys are excited about that. Oh, yay, you guys like the wide back. That's so fun. Oh, fun. Thanks, Colleen and Pamela. <laughs> Dolores said they'd be beautiful as whole cloth, whole cloth quilts. That's kind of hard to say, but I love that idea, Dolores. Thank you. I think I might do that. How fun is that? Would you do one on each side or would you do like a solid on the back? Like do uh, one of the wide backs on the front and then maybe a dainty daisy on the back or would you just do like the same on both sides if you did it as a whole cloth? That's fun. Thanks, Wanda and Linda. We have two Lindas today. How fun is that? I'm so glad you guys like it. Oh, and Linda says it's been a fun quilt along. Oh, yay. I'm glad the videos have been helpful, Linda. That's awesome. Okay, so those are our giveaways for the week. Are you guys ready to see Dainty Daisy? You guys ready to do a little bit of looking and sneak peeking? Dainty Daisy is my basic for Riley Blake Designs and a basic the difference between a basic and a collection is that it is the same print over a number of colors and it is more, or mostly the same print, like Lori's whole basics are not necessarily all the same print, but other basics with Riley Blake designs are the same print. Um, and they're more evergreen and what that means is they're around a lot longer. So a collection, they print up kind of a run or two if it's a very very popular collection and then when it's sold out it's gone um, 
And so you kind of move on to the next one. But a basic is around more long term and it's perfect for supplementing, you know, making an entire quilt out of. You can use it for backing fabric. You can use it as um, extra, you know, if you need to kind of flesh out a, a bunch of fabrics that you have. It's just so many options. I like to stitch on my basic too as well because it's really fun. It has a little bit of something interesting going on, but it doesn't necessarily take away from the design. So right now, um, Dainty Daisy, let's flip here. Dainty Daisy is available in 12 colors and in December we are going to 30 total colors. So we're adding 18 different colors. So I cannot wait for you guys to see them. I got these strike offs last week and I just really wanted to show you what they looked like. Um, so a strike off is where the factory sends us samples and we determine if the colors are right, if the designs look right, that kind of thing. So these aren't 100% the way it will look when we're done, but they're very close and you probably won't even be able to tell the difference on camera, on screen. So. Um, okay, so this, I'm gonna show you first the colors that we have available now, and then we'll go into the new ones. So these are the colors that are available now. This is the peony. This is what, um, I'm sorry, I forgot who said that she bought a whole bolt of peony, and I'm not gonna be able to find it now. <laughs> so this is the really pretty pink. You guys know that I have to have a pink. Um, this is one of my favorite colors. It's called lipstick, and I'm gonna kind of pick it up here so that the, colors underneath but it's kind of a dark peachy pinky red color <laughs> a lipstick is an interesting color um, but it really blends nicely with other colors and it's really fun so this is called lipstick this is called jazzberry and it's kind of a pinky red and you can see dainty daisy has um, a little speckle that kind of is interesting and then it also has a very very small daisy so that's what makes up my basic this one is called honey and it is the sweetest little yellow color and it's got like darker speckles on it I'm doing an embroidery design on this right now and I can't wait for you guys to see it it looks really fun as a background and this is the um, honey and then we have pumpkin you have to have a cute orange. <laughs> Isn't that fun? Then we go into the greens and blues. This is a mint color, which is a little bit hard to tell on the screen here, but it's a pretty green mint. And then one of my other favorite colors is this alpine. So it's kind of a medium green with a little hint of like blue in it. So I have strings, sorry, threads. <laughs> But this is Alpine. And this is a waterfall. So it's a very pale blue. You can see it here. It's very soft and pretty. We also have denim, which you guys know that I love. I've used um, denim for several quilts. And um, it's kind of just a nice denim blue. It's a medium blue. It's um, dark enough that a lot of your fabrics will stand out against it, but not so dark that it looks black. <laughs> Janet's here from Springfield, Missouri. Hey, Janet. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, this is Riley Navy. So this is a nice um, medium navy color. with the, You can see the speckles on that. And I used the Riley Navy as the border of my um, RBD block challenge quilt, which I have all done. It's right there, and I just need it to not be quite so crazy sunny so I can take pictures and show you guys. Hopefully by the end of this week, if we can get that done. This is Riley Gray, so it has um, kind of a darker speckle. And then you can see those little dainty daisies. And then we have licorice, which is a really nice black, um, just a great multi-purpose black. Sue says she bought several shades of Dainty Daisy last spring and she loves them. Yay! Oh, thank you guys. Um, so right now, Fat Quarter Shop has Fat Quarter bundles of Dainty Daisy with these 12 colors. You can find those now. Um, these are the current, the ones that I just showed you are the current colors. You can check them out at your other favorite quilt shops as well. And if there's 
a bolt that you want. Quilt shops are usually pretty happy to order that for you. You can find all 12 of these colors at Riley Blake right now. So now we're gonna go into the fun new things. You guys, this is very exciting, and some of these I'll have to hold up to you. We are getting low volumes. I fought and fought for these. I'm so excited because I want to use them as the backgrounds of all my quilts. <laughs> so what we have first up, and I'm really gonna have to hold this up for you guys, is a white on white. Can you see that? It's kind of a cloud background. It's a little hard to see on camera, but um, so we have white daisies, white speckles, and it is a really pretty white on white. I love a good white on white, don't you guys? They're so fun. We also have on that cloud background, we have the peony. So little tiny pink flowers and pink speckles. Isn't that pretty? It's gonna go with a lot of fun quilts. Then we have this barn red flower. So I have a patriotic collection coming out in the spring and I am doing a exclusive sew along with Happy Little Stitch Shop for um, that fabric collection with my Vintage Stars quilt. You can check out the details for that on her shop. It's Happy Little Stitch Shop, and we're using this Barn Red Dainty Daisy as our background. So I think that one's really fun. Tony says she loves seeing all the new fabrics. Me too, Tony. <laughs> this is uh, the cloud with that honey. So it's just a soft yellow. Isn't that pretty? Pamela says she's bought a fat quarter plus a sum for the pixel barn quilt. Oh, yay, Pamela. That's awesome. Teresa says that the yellow is on her list. Love it. Um, we have the cloud. Let's see. Do I have two here? Yeah. We have the cloud with gray because we need a nice neutral that will go with everything. Dolores says they will make great backgrounds. That's my hope, Dolores. <laughs> And then look at this one. How fun is this one, you guys, with the licorice? So um, cloud background with the licorice um, speckles and daisies. This is going to be really fun. It's going to be perfect for dark quilts with black in them. But even if you don't have black, if you just have prints, um, like even soft pastels, that they would really pop against this black background. I mean, it's the cloud background, but with the little black flowers. Isn't that fun? <laughs> Dolores says, if we could only pass your fabric around and touch it. I know, Dolores. Why don't you come to one of my classes? And then we can do that in person. <laughs> and then this is my favorite low volume, you guys. Look at this. It's called Vintage Pastel. And the flowers are all different colors. And the speckles are a very, very light pink. So there's pink and blue and yellow and green and... I think that's it, pink and you and yellow and green. So this is called the Vintage Pastels and it's gonna be really fun for use with all my fabric collections. I'm super excited about that, you guys. So that one's the Vintage Pastels and I'm very excited that you guys are so happy about them. <laughs> um, so now let's look at the colors, okay? So we have to have a nice, good red it's kind of fading out here on the screen, but this is a called Riley Red. It is very like tomato red. So it's gonna be great for Christmas projects, um, patriotic projects. Let's see if you can kind of see that. If I hold it up, is it still? Ah, that's not too bad. So that's Riley Red. And then we also, because we like farms around here, needed a barn red. So again, these two reds, Reds are always hard to get to show up on camera. They don't necessarily play well, but this is a deeper red. You can kind of see how they, the difference there. So that's the Riley red and then the barn red. So it's just a deeper, darker red. Uh, Pamela said would look cute with the black cat on the Halloween quilt from Fat Quarter Shop. That's so true, Dolores. Did I say, oh no, Pamela said that. And then Dolores has said that would be a great idea. Yes. Unfortunately, these don't come out till December, so you would have to wait to put your Halloween quilt up until next year. So you guys know that I am a huge fan of the Butterscotch color. I used it in several prints and as a background of one of my prints in Daisy Fields. 
I just adore... Mm, we went a little blurry there. I don't know what happened. Let's see if we can get that to work. <laughs> it got confused. There we go. So this is butterscotch. It's a deep gold color. It's so pretty, you guys. And I can see this um, working for a lot of quilts as far as um, accents, as a background, if you do some nice light pastels. Um, it would even look great as a background with Sweet Acres fabrics. I have some collections that are coming up that it's going to go perfectly with. Um, and I think it would be a beautiful quilt backing as well with this gorgeous butterscotch color. Cindy says she wants a buy now button. <laughs> Yay, Cindy, I'm so glad you like them. Um, I wanted, I love my alpine green, but I wanted a more, um, what's the right word? Kind of a, a medium green. Um, this is called Holly. So it's going to play really, really nice with all your Christmas fabrics, spring projects. It's a really nice, um, pretty green, and it's called Holly. I think I'm going to sneeze, y'all. Hang on. Um, and this is, it's coming in a little blue looking on the screen. Sorry, one sec. But this is Jade. So it is actually um, a nice deep green. Um, again, it's looking a little blue here for some reason, but it is a beautiful rich color. Like if you think like a dark green like jewel tone, that's what we have right here is this is called Jade. So it looks really, really pretty. Then even though I'm not a purple girl, I know that so many of you are. So for you guys and you guys alone, <laughs> I added in a beautiful uh, lilac and isn't this a pretty color it's a nice light purple and um, this will be really pretty and that way if you've ever said to yourself gosh I wish Bev had purple in her collections this would play really nice with the colors that I use um, so you could pick up a fat quarter of this you know to add in yourself and make it your own <laughs> so this is lilac this is, um, the color is a little off on this one as well, but this is called Stargazer, and it is like a really dark stone blue. So it's a beautiful blue. It'll, it'll be enough different between the denim and the Riley Navy to be a wonderful background for quilts. Um, I have a quilt kit coming out with that patriotic collection called Heartland, and we're gonna use this as the background so those red and white flags really um, stand out against it. So this is called Stargazer. And then the last one is a deeper gray and it's called Iron. So this is going to be a nice dark background for quilts if you want to really contrast against things or um, it would be beautiful as a backing as well. So anyway, those are all the lovely new colors of Dainty Daisy. I hope that you guys like them. Um, again, those are coming out in December, and I designed a very, very cute free quilt pattern for release with these new colors. It's called Heart to Sew, and it is made up of little thread spools, and then there's a sewing machine. So if you go to Riley Blake Designs and go to the storyboards page, I should have linked to it. I'll add it to today's video description so you guys can see it. But it'll be out in December along with these new colors. It is a very cute quilt and it's 10 inch stacker friendly because the other exciting thing is we're getting some pre-cuts with the Dainty Daisy. So we'll have yardage of course available, we'll have fat quarter bundles available so you'll get a fat quarter of every color but we're also doing 10 inch stackers. So there will be 42 pieces. So of the 30 colors, 12 of them will be repeats and you will be able to make that quilt with a 10 inch stacker and a little bit of extra yardage for the sewing machine. So I can't wait for you guys to see it. I just was so excited about the strike offs that came and all the colors that I really wanted to show them to you guys. And hopefully you're as excited as I am about the new prints. I don't know if you could be as excited as I am, but I'm very excited. But hopefully you guys are too. So that is Dainty Daisy and it is going to be in stores in December. So the perfect Christmas present <laughs> and perfect for diving into the new year with all the fun things that we're going to do. So let's talk about what's coming up. Oh, Donna says she loves a sewing themed quilt and Janet says, yay, purple. <laughs> 
Yes, Teresa says, decisions, decisions. She loves them all. Oh, yay, guys. Thank you. Okay, let's talk about Spooky Lane. So Spooky Lane is our next sew along that starts next Monday, you guys. This is going to be a blast. So next Monday is our kickoff, which really means that we get together and have a good time and talk about the quilt we're gonna do. No actual sewing will occur. <laughs> so next week we'll kick it off. Then on August 7th, we're going to start our sewing and we're going to take a row a week. Um, and um, it might be a little bit to do, you know, at this time of year, or maybe you don't want to sew up everything at once, but just like all the others, we, I will have those videos available for you to use whenever you would like. So we are going to start on the 7th with the star and moon row, and then the next week we are gonna do those funky wide turn dashes, then we'll go on to the bats, etc. These blocks are not hard, they're just, um, you know, you're gonna have to pay attention, like with most picture blocks, you're gonna have to pay attention to the layout, the lettering, but it's really just stitch and flip blocks and things like that. I'm gonna walk you through all of it. It's going to be really, really fun, and I would love, love, love for you to join me um, on that sew along that we're gonna start next week. You can find a link to the pattern in my shop in the, uh, description, whichever that, I couldn't remember what it was called, the video description, you can find the pattern link, you can find the link to my page where I've gathered up shops that I've found that are carrying Haunted Adventure, if you would like to sew with Haunted Adventure. Um, there are a couple shops that actually have the Spooky Lane kitted up as well, so you can check out them. And all, in fact, there's other quilts from this collection as well, so you can um, check out whatever you would like as far as that. Those are linked in the video description as well. And then, you know, if you go ahead and get all your supplies, you'll be ready to start sewing in two weeks. Um, you can, of course, join in with any fabric collection you like. If there's another Halloween collection that you're wanting to sew with, then please feel free to join in. But I would love for you to use Haunted Adventure. Um, it is my Halloween collection that is out in stores right now. So I have it linked for you in various places on my blog. All right, you guys. Oh, you're excited about the Halloween quilt. Yay, that's awesome. It's gonna be so fun. Picture blocks are very, very fun to sew up, I think. Um, okay, you guys, that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I have had so much fun showing you Dainty Daisy, talking about finishing up our Meadowland quilt. And don't forget to um, leave a comment to enter the giveaway for the Sweet Acres Wide Backs. I will see you guys next Monday. Oh, you guys, I forgot to show you my Hang on, one sec. Okay, <laughs> I'm sewing along with Fat Quarter Shop's Evergreen Mystery Quilt along and we are making up a really cute quilt. So this was the first, oops, this was the first section. This is what we sewed up last week and then, well, it's the week before, and then last week we added this section. So I think you can kind of see where we're going with this quilt. It is going to be a very, very cute tree, you guys. So this week had some fussy cutting on it, some little pinwheels, and um, I wanna show you guys my little, this collection that I'm using is called Twas. So as in Twas the Night Before Christmas, I'm pairing it with my Alpine Dainty Daisy that I just showed you. So the prints are from Twas, and then the rest of the tree is my Dainty Daisy. But look at these little, look at these little elements, you guys. They're tiny mice with little Christmas things. So a wreath and a stocking in bed, dreaming of sugar plums. <laughs> um, look at this one's reading a story and putting a, tr a star on the tree. And then look at a little snow globe. Oh, this one's dreaming of sugar plums too. And look at this, this print. Isn't this so cute with the stockings? I love it. And um, I did some fussy cutting on the presents as well. There's a really cute Santa. Look how cute these are with the stockings. So anyway, those are the first two weeks. We have another section releasing tomorrow. And so you can check out my blog for that. I'll have the link for the pattern for you. And then there'll be one more week, which will be, um, well, I'm not gonna tell you what it is. One more week and then an assembly week. So this sew along is five weeks long 
There's only been two weeks, so you can definitely still dive in. Grab your favorite collection, or you can um, follow the link in my blog if you want to check out Twas or any of the other um, Christmas collections that uh, Back Quarter Shop has. So I forgot to mention that, and I wanted to make sure I caught you guys and showed you my cute blocks. I, it was really hard to get a photo because those little squares of those tiny mice are um, one inch. They're one inch mice. They're so cute. <laughs> anyway. Um, I love it. Anyway, so that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you have a fabulous week. Stay cool, everybody. And we'll see you next week as we get our Halloween on and we start our spooky lane sew along. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I love hanging out with you guys. I love sewing up this quilt with you. I hope you guys had fun with it too. I'll see you next week. Thanks, everybody.